Hello and welcome back to the Trail Matters Podcast. I am your host, Eric Manning. This is episode number 306, single track session, and uh, we are launching this on March the 4th, 2021. We started adding dates in there because we're getting more people coming to the podcast and just making sure they know when this launched. In case there is a contest, we don't want them to enter thinking they're winning something when that was four years ago. Uh, But it's also just a a good reminder of where we're at, and that's what the single track session is. So let's just get into it with... uh, Let's go down memory road for the last few weeks. Uh, Previous episode, number 304, we had Natalie Sheffield on the show. And uh, again, just a a great podcast. Um, Super inspiring to me. I love to see people take chances, (laughs) you know, um, educated or not. Um, It's just always interesting to see the mindset of people when they jump out of their comfort zone. Because again, that's so much of what the world and the life of ultra running can be um, is finding your limits, stretching that limit, seeing what you're capable of. And that happens as well in your personal life. And it was just great talking to Natalie. Like I said, she's been a long time listener of the show. Uh, great story, um, super encouraging. And hopefully people out there had a really good listen to maybe challenge themselves or maybe just that little push to to try something that they've been thinking about for a little while and that's what this podcast is all about is just in, you know talking to people and uh, maybe helping someone along the way I apologize for the audio um, it's difficult sometimes via zoom um, so hopefully that didn't discourage anybody from listening um, to that show but it's a great show and I want to thank Natalie for taking the time to do that and, and wish her well on her journey with three peaks training Our last episode that we launched this week uh, was with a good friend of the show, Trevor Fuchs. Um, He's just such a fun guy to have behind the mic, just such a genuine person. And I loved his approach to 2021 after 2020 was just, you know, a year we all know, just kind of letting things happen, you know, not planning too much. And again, something that maybe some of us needed to hear, um, yours truly included, Uh, but it it was Good to have him behind the microphone, and like I mentioned, we're going to be following him all the way to Hard Rock 2021. Such a, I'm excited for that race. Um, not just because for me, it's it's the pinnacle uh, for me, and everybody has their own thing. But Hard Rock was one that I followed early on in my trail running career um, or experience. I don't call it a career; I just don't have that. But um, it, with the mountains, with the location, and getting familiar with the community, a race I've never run, but uh, nonetheless, to me, one of the granddaddies of them all, if you will, and there's such a a solid list of runners this year. Now, again, it goes back to who's going to make it to the start line, because every year it seems like, you know, people drop off that for one reason or another, injury, travel, you know, whatever it is, but That should be a good one. And to follow Trevor up to that is going to be great. And we'll be reaching out and talking uh, through our single track session and our social media platforms for people to have questions for Trevor as we get closer to his next shows. And again, I'm really, since that podcast, it's only been a couple days since the podcast, I've had two other people reach out to me that are running in white trail shoes. So folks, pay attention. Don't miss the trend. If it happens... But the white trail shoes are are out and about. The mysterious streaks of white light. Let's get into Bear of the Week. It sounds like your host has already had one, but he has not had one. But this year, this week's Bear of the Week comes from Illuminated Brew Works in Chicago. It's Junior Astronaut Juice. It's a double dry hopped IPA. We may or may not have had this one Uh, reviewed in years past, but I'm bringing it back if I have. And for the simple fact, I really like this one. This is right now, this is my comfort beer. This is not, it's not big, bold. It's not in your face. It's 6%. It's super mild. It's got a little fruity flavor to it. Um, Tangerine is what I'm kind of pulling away from it. Um, Killer can, one of my favorites. Um, It's not, it's just not in your face. It's such a mellow Super good, smooth taste. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't it doesn't kick you in the teeth. It doesn't give you that strong. 
IPA, even though it's a double, it's just a good one. I absolutely 100 and plus percent recommend this one. It's not easy to find where I find it. Unfortunately, I got to pay premium price for it. But for a relaxing, just soothing, comfort, warm hug um, IPA right now, this one hits the spot. So give it a shot from Illuminated Brew Works Junior Astronaut Juice. Super easy one to remember and a super fun one. So again, taking suggestions for beers of the week, but that is is mine this week. And there's been a few cans in the in the garbage the last few weeks. So what have we been doing? Well, I, I just got recently went down to Moab, Utah, um, for just a getaway, just to kind of get out of the snow. Uh, find some dirt and do some runs. I reached out to people through social media, um, guiding me where to go. Now I use the All Trails map when I'm out of town because it's easy. It's you know you can get a lot of good information. But sometimes, you know how it is, trail runners. There's the there's the hidden gems, the ones that are I don't know maybe not traveled a lot um, because All Trails a lot too has a lot of hikers and nothing against that, but it's just different, right? Hiking a trail, running a trail, two different things. So I reached out. We found some good trails. Uh, Sarah and myself went down and had a great time. Uh, Moab's kind of coming back. Um, they had such a hard time through 2020, but it's nice to see the town hopping again, uh, the economy growing because some places really were hit hard with that. And had a, had such a fun experience. A um, couple good meals uh, to go. Sat in the hotel room, super romantic with ambiance and all. I think I had to move like an, a table lamp over near so we could see our food. Um, but it was funny, someone down in Moab, um, I got up in the morning to get me some coffee at the, I don't know, the, the sweet breakfast that the hotels always offer for a quote unquote free. And someone said, Hey, are you trail manners? And we had a long conversation. So that's a little uncomfortable sometimes, but also fun. Um, but yeah, Moab's such a great time, um, in the winter for me. Um, we were able to run with t-shirts, shorts, got to see a few different arches, uh, ran some fun trails, and just nice to get away. Um, this weekend, I'll be headed down to Phoenix, Arizona for a soccer tournament uh, that I coach. And this is kind of our last tournament as a team. Uh, we got some kids uh, embarking on their, their eighth and ninth graders, and some of the ninth graders made their high school team. So we'll be separating. They can't play with the club during high school ball. So um, it's our last little little fun getaway down in Phoenix and the weather right now highs are in the 84s so I cannot guarantee I will be back behind the mic I might melt because I don't do heat and going from 30 40 degrees to 80 that's gonna sting just a wee bit um, and I'm not down there for vacation right so it's a quick hitter fly in fly out coach a few games but I did buy um, last week um, at one of my local running shops on clearance, because I'm cheap, I bought a pair of the Hoka Carbon X. Uh, just wanted to try them. I thought, okay, felt good. I'm not a road runner. I don't run on pavement, but I have a trail uh, pathway right next to my place. I need to do that, and I will be doing it more. So I'm going to take those down to Phoenix and hopefully get out at like 2 a.m. when it's just a, a, a brisk 70 um, you know, it'll be cooler than that, but, uh, get up and get, get on some, some pavement for a little bit down there. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to getting out of town again. Um, I don't know, just recharge, refresh and have a good time, uh, down there. Now I've got a little story to report. Yours truly here has been struggling basically ever since he started running. This is no news. I have the tightest calves ever. They just, I foam roll, I got a thumper gun, I got a tens unit, I go to massage, but my calves just, they're just uh, rocks sometimes. And so I've been having some, some big time Achilles issues on my right side, which is different than the other issue I had on my left side. Um, but yesterday I started my physical therapy, which is always great. I love it. Um, I go to Bridge Phys Physical Therapy in South Ogden, Utah. Tim and Elliot take such good care of me. And this is not a plug for them, no sponsorship, but I'll tell you what, you get one body, you want to make sure it's taken care of correctly. And these guys take such good care of me. Um, so, I, you know, you go in, um, had some ultrasound, had some um, massage work done, had some Graston technique, which always feels great when they scrape you. 
Then comes the part that makes me cringe. And I know a lot of you have had it, and it's, it's amazing. I love it, but it's dry needling. Dry needling, I'm terrified of needles. Anybody that knows me knows I'm terrified. I've passed out before. I'm not uh, going to deny it. I'm not trying to be tough. But every time I go get dry needling, I, I sweat. Like I'm laying on this thing I'm on my belly because they're doing my calves. And I just start like, it's like a uh, Saturday Night Live skit. Literally sweat pours off everything, head. And, and when I got done, my feet and ankles were like, I just soaked them. And even uh, Tim's like, yeah, dude, your, your ankles and feet, man, you were, you were cranking in some sweat. And I, all I can do is apologize. I'm like, okay, I'm not a feet guy anyway, but that's gross. So I am like, I'm so sorry. Do I have to pay extra for this? You know, kind of laughing, but nevertheless, I walked out feeling so much better. I have a few more treatments to go still, but, uh, wow, that, uh, dry needling. And I know a lot of people out there have tried it. And if you're not afraid of needles, I mean, it's just no big deal. But for me, uh, uh-uh. but I was, I was, yeah, I'm only even telling another story, but it was, it's, it's good to be back on the right track. Because I volunteered at a local 5K um, that's put on by a great organization, our community, the Goal Foundation. They put on the Ogden Marathon and the bike race and um, the El Dulce and then this winter racing circuit. It starts with the 5K every two weeks. They ramp up the, the distance. Again, folks, I always tell people, if you want to get motivated to run, if you need that little juice in your life to kind of turn the corner, if you're kind of down, volunteer at a race. I don't care if it's a road race, a trail race, a bike race triathlon, whatever. Um, I, I was fortunate to work the start finish, um, due to the protocols. We had uh, corral starts. So I was the one that kind of let them off in groups of 15 or so. And then just have them come back through the finish, start snowing like a, a beast, uh, during, during the day, but it is called the winter racing circuit. It's not the balmy 80 racing circuit. So, but I'll, how inspiring was it? It's a 5k, but it wasn't just the race itself. It was the look on people's faces to kind of get back to the word that we probably I don't know, should or shouldn't use normalcy. In-person event, um, quite a few people. was. I was impressed with the way this race was put on um, from a race director and organizational standpoint because they really did follow every protocol as they could you know, with what we're faced with here. Um, but it was just so good to see people out and about. The smile on their face, so many thank yous. And I think it wasn't thank you for the race. It was thank you for having in person again. And wherever you fall on this fence of events or non-events, at the end of the day, everybody has a choice. And also, as long as they're following their their local health department rules, I think you know that's all you can do. You're following the law, the rule, whatever it is. But it was so fun to be a part of that. I I love volunteering. It's something I've always enjoyed. Obviously, I work for a nonprofit, which volunteerism is um, a big part of what we do. Um, But uh, folks, get out. If you know there's a race in your area, go volunteer. I don't care if it's at an aid station, course marking, cleanup, uh, start, finish, timing, whatever it is. It's just so fun to see people out. Um being active and doing what they love. And it, it is motivating in itself. Um, so give it a shot. We don't have a lot of races to cover this week um, and things running. And, you know, we don't want to keep you. We don't want to get you bored. We have some great shows coming up. We got quite a few Ask Trail Manners questions. Uh, we're in the middle of Woody Footy of the month of February. The voting is over on my Facebook at Trail Manners um, Facebook page. Go over. There's three photos for Woody Footy of the month of February. The winner gets put in for Woody Footy of the year, and I guarantee there's going to be some sweet prizes. All this is free, so even if you get like a nickel, that's pretty good. But there's going to be, I'm telling you what, Woody Footy of the year is going to have some serious swag. I'm going to do whatever I can to pull some sweet swag that way. Um, so head over to the Trail Manners Facebook page. You'll find it. Scroll down. It's not buried too deep. We're not super active. Uh, but look for Woody Footy of the Year because we still have the Woody Footy of the Month. We got our first one for March. Super excited. There's some great ones um, that came through this week um, from all types of things, from vacations to um, you know everything else. Turtle Miller went to the pool. His daughter... Uh, is training for a triathlon. Um, she, he ran a 618 mile with his young daughter. Um, 
and I don't know the age off the top of my head, but let's just say young, right? She's, I'll say 12, and I'm, if I'm wrong, I apologize. We'll go to 14 tops, but I'm thinking the 12, 12 range. That's a fast mile. So great job there. Uh, David Kesterson, Mount LeConte in the Smokies. I love it. Uh, Aaron Davis. Okay, so Aaron Davis is just prepping for the Wasatch 100. When he posted this, he says he's got 195 days to train, and he's only got about 1,800 miles and 350,000 vertical feet to get in before then. Um, but he was up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, that's a great shot. Uh, Bonnie Kaminsky. We're getting a lot from Antelope Island. Again, I got a lot, you know local followers here, so we want to spread the spread the love. There's a few from Antelope Island. Uh, Gifford Pinchot from Full Moon Rising in the Colorado River, a solid shot. Eric Lewis was down in St. George Padre Canyon. That's an amazing shot. Heidi Waddups um, had a great picture on Antelope Island. She got an extra point, but uh, was not the winner, but she had Sarah and uh, Barrett in the photo, so that's a good one. Mark Davis, uh, <laughs> he's uh, literally even deeper than knee-deep in snow uh, at Neff's Canyon. Uh, Tim Barbie out in Columbia, Illinois, in the back roads, and it is uh, it looks sunny and warm in that photo. Maybe a little bit warmer than here, but a great grin on that face. Joshua Kuhn, Ogden BST. Brandon Root, Red Butte Canyon, uh, measuring streams in Salt Lake City for, for work. Um, Lee Moss is back, Mueller Park Trail. Megan Smith, Logan River Trail. Andrew Giles, Edmonton, Alberta, under the snow moon. Another great shot. Uh, Kelly Barkema here in Ogden, um, great uh, shot in the Ogden area, and Rachel Zeller's in, in a vacation in Florida, hopefully recovering well from her uh, recent knee surgery. Um, see, we know a lot about our, our followers, and that's the way we like it. We like it at the personal level. We don't need 20,000 followers. We just want genuine, engaged people, um, and that's what I love. This week's winner, though, from Cedar Dust on Galbraith Mountain, Washington, Jeff Hart. I love this photo. And again, if you know the host, again, Woody Footy winners a lot of times are where I look at a picture and go, I wish I was there right now. And a lot of these I feel that way. Don't get me wrong. But you guys know my my obsession with the Northwest and big trees and green and all this other stuff. And then water's involved, rivers, so don't forget of those things. Uh, but this one's fantastic. It's I, I can picture myself there. I wish I was there. Um, so congratulations to Jeff Hart. He'll be a finalist for Woody Footy of the month of March. And this will be our feature photo uh, for the single track session. So uh, keep those coming. Spread the word. Let's get let's get all over. I mean, we used to have a lot more, obviously, when we were in our prime. You know, I don't want to say we're in our downward stage. But in our prime, we had them from all over the, the country and all over the world. Um, so let's let's keep sharing that. If you got some running friends, encourage them to participate. Uh, it's just fun to see where people go. And again, one of my favorite things through our social media channels is when followers start communicating with each other that may not know each other, that talk to each other. Hey, where was this? Or, oh man, I've been there. And just get that dialogue going because it's such a great community. And, and speaking of that, we do have our Trail Manners community page, which is something that you have to, I don't get approved to be on. And that's just my way to make sure that you know, the people on there are, are legit. Um, and it's a great safe place. I keep saying that and I don't mean safe, but just a good place to get some real, um, honest feedback and also just engagement. So you can head over there and check that out. I think we're 89 members strong there, um, with more people, uh, coming through. So head on over trail manners, community, Facebook page. Uh, it's pretty cool. We'll get a lot more active, um, on that as well. And also I need to mention uh, just our Trail Manners flag. We got a few flags if you want one. Um, I'll send one to you. You send it back to me after you take it to a super cool location. And there's actually a Trail Manners, Ask Trail Manners question here um, that we'll tackle um, later on. So let's get into the Ask Trail Manners segment. The first one <laughs> from uh, Andrew Giles in Canada. He asked me, my fastest 5K and 10K times. Well, here's a shocker. I've never run a 5K and I've never run a 10K race. So I don't know what they truly are. If I went to like Strava, it might show me. Um, but I've never run a race of those distances. And I almost ran the 5K last weekend that I um, volunteered at because I could. Um, but with, with 
what do you call it? Just just trying to help out. It was the first race in a lot over over about a year. Um, I never did uh, run that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull up my Strava account and let me check here. Uh, estimated best efforts. I don't know if that's close to what we're asking here. Uh, maybe this year I'll run a 5K or 10K or just run the distance and see what I got. Um, but according to Strava, um, my estimated best effort 5K is 1952 and my 10K is 5108. So those are my estimated best efforts on Strava, but I've never raced that distance. And if you know me very well, I don't really pay attention a lot. Um, I'm not fast. So maybe if I went out purposely and tried to run a fast 5K, um, I don't know. I don't know what that would be. However, I did get duped the other day. Um, woke up in the morning and Sarah says, hey, let's go for a short little four-miler and we'll do you know six at night. All right, let's go. And she ended up running almost a sub eight, for like out of the gate for four miles. I wasn't ready for that. And uh, that killed me. I called it on Strava, my heavy breather. I am not fast. I'm not in shape right now. I'm built like a Tonka truck more than anything. But that was pretty fast for me. So I don't know what a good 5K time is. And I'm going to say good, not like world record or race winning times because those are pretty quick. But that's a great question, Andrew. And maybe this year I will uh, see what I can do. Next up from Lee Moss, do you still have your VW bus? I don't know if we brought this up on the show yet, folks, but I do not. Studio 78 is with a new owner, has a new home, and uh, trust me, it was not an easy decision. It was years of trying to figure out to make that decision, Um, but for the time being, that was the best one. Will Eric have another VW bus? The answer to that is yes. Um, The timing right now is just, you know didn't work it, it uh, it's sad so many great memories in that and so many great guests in that but like the people that bought this bus for me have no idea what the amazing people that came through that. and I have no idea who came through you know before me and owning it but uh, man we had some great guests in that bus uh, I know Lee's got one um, I miss it I know it was a good shtick for our show. Um, we'll still call it Studio 78. It's still part of our legacy, if you will, here um, in our history. Uh, but yeah, no more on the uh, Studio 78. One moment of silence, please. Okay, we are back. Next question comes from Katie out of California. Can we request the Trail Manners flag for local stuff? I have some great spots for a shot. Katie, absa friggin' lutely. You don't have to go on an epic trip. You don't have to do a race. If there's some cool shots that you would just like to take the flag, um, again, the idea behind these Trail Manners flags, and I've, they fold up pretty small, and I put them in my vest. Um, you just take them to a cool spot, unfold it, take a cool photo, sign it, even where you're at, and then we'll get you mail it back to me. And I'm working on return labels too, so I don't want any you know, money out of your pocket. But I want to take some photos all over with these flags. I think it'd be fun at the end of the year to kind of see where they travel. So, Katie, that's such a great question. No, you don't have to go to an exotic location. It doesn't have to be a race. I mean, like locally, we've got some great peaks. I'm going to take them up that I'm there all the time. Um, so if you've got some cool spots that you think it'd be fun to put a, you know, unfold a Trail Manners flag, we got some Trail Manners logo and a Woody Footy flag. we got a couple of each. Uh, again, just message me, manners at trailmanners.com. We'll send one right out. Uh, do your thing, sign it, send it back, and it'll uh, we'll ship it out somewhere else. So that is a great question. Next question comes from Natalie from Wisconsin. Do you take guest requests? Natalie, absolutely. If there's someone you want to hear on the show, um, we'll do everything we can to get them on. Again, we're not uh, taking over the world by any means, uh, so, so you never know. The guest may not have even heard about the podcast. But if there's someone you know that... Um, you want to request, we'll do what we can. And if it's someone you know personally, uh, maybe you can help um, set that up. Um, Again, we're just looking for good stories. It doesn't have to be a a podium athlete, an elite athlete. We love good human stories. Uh, We like to keep it, you know, obviously based around trail running. As far as if they're they're not a trail runner, I'm not saying we wouldn't have them on the show for sure. Um, But again, it's just, it's about the listener, you know, what people want to hear, obviously with the podcast name, Trail Manners. 
we do like to keep it based around trail running. But yes, we do take requests. And so send them my way. You can do that on so many platforms. And again, manners at trailmanners.com. Hard to forget that one. Send them over and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. So that's a great question. Next up, <laughs> this is a fun, this is from Jennifer, another one from California. So I'm pretty late to the party here. I came across your podcast about two weeks ago and can't stop listening. And after two weeks, I feel like we're already friends. Well, I'm going to stop you there because we are, Jennifer. Just the fact you've listened to the show and you, you fell in love. Don't worry about being late to the party. That's what's so great about podcasts. They stay forever. So much of this stuff is still relevant, especially the conversations. And if you think we're friends, we are friends. That's what this podcast is all about. Uh, so continuing on, question is, who is your ultimate guest? Somebody you haven't had on but would love to interview. Okay, enough typing. I'm back to listening. Keep it positive and keep it flowing with energy. Well, first of all, Jennifer, thank you. We will keep it positive because that's the only way we want to go down this road or trail. And flowing with energy, I hope that's how it comes across because I do love doing this. And your question is, who's my ultimate guest? Now, I'm going to cheat. I had a little time to think about this. Um, this came in a few days ago, and she stumped me. <laughs> I've been racking my brain. I have a list of people that I would absolutely love to have on the show. Um, but, man, what a this is a good question. Um, and, again, I think it comes down to many things. So one of them, for sure, and it's not going to be a huge surprise, would be Killian. And the difference is this guy literally is one of the nicest guys on the planet. And I know as a, from an athlete's perspective and a trail runner's perspective, that's not all he does, but say athlete, he's top of the food chain, right? He's just amazing. But what I would do, and if you've listened to the show before, I'd try and find a different angle. He's been on, you know, a lot of people know about his accomplishments. I would, I would come at a different angle and, and try to ask other types of questions, maybe getting to know him or you know, some obscure things just to find out more information about who he is, what makes him tick, um, those types of things. But I think he would be one. Um, and I have a list, like I mentioned, and this isn't it. Um, and Trayson, I mean, how awesome would that be? I mean, we're talking legend, right? And she, I can't imagine everything she has done in her trail running career. And she's still out there being such a great ambassador, but I'd love to have Ann on. Uh, here's, here's one for you. And if you know the show, you know why Jack Black, I just like the dude, like, I don't care. Um, I would just have him on because I think he'd be fun. Um, one of my, my favorite dudes, um, next up would be Lucy Bartholomew. I like her approach, her enthusiasm. Um, she is a Solomon athlete. So I saw her here in Ogden because that's where Solomon's located. One of their shops or one of their headquarters and saw her on the trail. Um, she, I think she'd have a really good story. Um, a neat perspective, um, and she just seems like she'd be fun, has a lot of energy. Uh, next up would probably be someone like Gordon Ainsley. Um, he's a legend as well. Um, and if you don't know who he is, look him up. But, you know, kind of, um, I don't know, maybe there's some controversy surrounding it, but I'm just going to call him the founder of ultra running in a way, um, you know, Wasatch 100 wise. Um, you know, that's how it all started. And again, there's might be a little here and there on that. I don't care. He just seems like a fun dude. And these people I would absolutely want to be in person with and not on a phone if possible because it's feeling their energy and who they are. I think it'd be fun. Uh, my last two um, would be like Rob Carr. I think he's got an amazing story that is helpful to so many. Uh, ambassador of our sport. Super quiet guy realistically through you know everything you hear about him. But you know he's got a great story. And Ryan Sands. I think Ryan... Uh, epitomizes, you know, trail running. He's got a family that he he always is, is showing off and posting about. I shouldn't say showing off, but sharing with us. Um, just seems like a really down to earth, genuine dude. Um, and not just that list, but you stump me because I don't have that like spreadsheet. And you know me, I have spreadsheets. That's not a spreadsheet I have. But after that, really just people with a great story. So I don't know who they are. Um, cause some of my favorite interviews we've had on have been surprises. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, you, you think, you know, somebody, or you think, you know, a story and they just come out of left field and hit you with a hammer and you're like, what? And they have something that you just don't expect. 
Um, and I know so many of our listeners have responded, uh, asked questions. Um, some of our most downloaded shows are people with just great stories. Um, I think as runners, um, we definitely look at it like the Killians and the Krars and the you know, Courtney DeWalters and, you know, the runners like that, the Jim Walmsleys, and we we're in awe and we, we enjoy uh, seeing what they can do. But it's so fun to connect with people you share so much with and don't know it, right? So some of the shows we've had on before, that's how it was for me. I call them goosebump moments, right? Because <laughs> I, I get, I'm so lucky. I am absolutely luckiest guy um, to be a part of the podcast because I've got to meet these people and to be in front of them. And that's the one thing that's hard to convey as a host is the people, right? You, you hear them and I'm hoping, hoping you can hear the passion and the stories coming out of their voice. But when you get the opportunity to sit across from these people and and feel the energy, um, it's it's remarkable. And so we've had a lot of goosebump guests. Maybe that's what I'll call them moving forward, goosebump guests, because they do. They literally give me goosebumps and I get excited. I'm just like a listener, to be honest with you. I just ask the questions. I love listening to the stories. I get so much from all these guests that we have on the show. So as much as we have these, the names I just mentioned, um, I honestly think I go back to, um, the guests with the stories, the, the, how they've overcome something, how they've come through a challenge, how they've, um, challenged themselves or reach beyond what they thought was possible or had that aha moment where they put the you know flag in the sand and said, I'm done. I'm going to do this instead, whether it's an addiction, whether it's, you know, a lifestyle, what any of those things. So it's not always about racing, but it's always fun to hear what trail running I don't know, has helped them through, I guess, because it's, uh, yeah, those are the shows. So I don't want to ramble on about that. But yeah, the Goosebump guests to me are the ones that this show's all about. And I hope we have many, many more of those to come. And that's why I look for, you know, um, as we had earlier a, a question um, about, you know, do we take requests from Katie from California? Absolutely, because you, you know, the people that have these stories, you know, they're your friends, they're your running partners. And we always like it if they want to share their story. We don't want to dig anything out. So if, if they want to share their story, um, we'd love to have them on uh, because there's so many out there. So thank you so much for the questions on the Ask Trail Manners. Again, if you have an Ask Trail Manners question, shoot them my way, manners at trailmanners.com, or we post that, I think, every Saturday on social media. When I say social media, I mean Facebook. And now we've got a question of the week. This is one I've, I've um, struggled with for a long time. As you know, I'm not a huge social media guy. I understand the, the, the need for it. I say need. I understand why it's there. And for someone that has a podcast or a business, huge, right? Personally, I don't use it a ton. Um, Instagram, I probably do more of. But here's my question. And I'm really curious. How many hashtags are too many on Instagram? How many hashtags are too many? I see hashtags where they do so many and then they comment on their own thing with more hashtags. I don't like hashtags. I don't, I'm okay with, I think my, my, my okay limp meter, five or six, I don't know, maybe that's too many, but that's kind of my, and I use the same ones, right? Trail Manners, Trail Manners Podcast, Podcast, Trails, you know, Woody Footy, what, Ask Trail Manners, whatever it is. But I see some that just way overkill in my opinion. And that's my opinion, Right. But I'm just curious what other people's thoughts are. How many hashtags are too many on Instagram? Like how many tags do you need to put there to get your point across? Some are fun. I enjoy some of them and people get witty, but I don't know. It's a question, right? No right or wrong answer. Personal preference, but I'm kind of curious what people think. Because I want to make sure either I'm off my rocker or my meds and I'm just being a tool or maybe there's something to it. I don't know. So anyway, that's kind of it. I want to thank Tim for the purchase of a shirt and beanie. Tim from Illinois bought a shirt and Joe bought some shirts. So I appreciate everybody buying the Trail Manor swag. We got some cool shirts with the new logo, super soft. 
uh, some beanies left. So head on over to our store page, help support the podcast. So thank you so much for uh, those purchases. We do have a Strava page of those who have asked. Um, Trail Manners is a Strava page. Uh, you can go on. Uh, again, still looking for people to write some columns for our website. If you have a cool story, race report, adventure report, uh, course preview, whatever, right? Let's talk. Uh, let's get that on there. I also want to pre- uh, thank people for their Patreon support. There is a donate button, and I want to thank everybody so much for leaving reviews on iTunes and Facebook, ratings and reviews. Totally helps a podcast, and I'm going to be honest with you, it helps, right? I love reading them because it gives me an idea that we do have listeners, and they do enjoy what we're doing here with the Trail Manners podcast. So thank you all so much for continuing to listen to the show. Please spread the word. Let your friends know we're out there. Uh, Don't forget about voting for your Woody Footy the month of February. I think that ends this weekend. And keep bringing your Ask Trail Manners and Woody Footies to the forefront because we love them. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy March. Stay safe. Keep listening. This is Eric Manning with the Trail Manners Podcast, and I am out.